to deny your discomfort is ultimately to deny part of yourself. Welcome to Agency for Change, a podcast from Kid Glove that brings you the stories of change makers who are actively working to improve our communities. In every episode, we'll meet with people who are making a lasting impact in the places we call home. Hello, everyone. This is Lynn Weinman, President and Chief Strategist at Kid Glove. Welcome to another episode of the Agency for Change podcast. I want to start today by throwing out a question, and it's a question I'd like you to keep in mind throughout the show. Are you ready for it? The question is, when was the last time you felt discomfort and what did you do about it? If you're like most people, you may have tried to hide from it. You may have tried to stuff it down or avoid it. You may have tried to get numb. I mean, really, who wants to be in a state of discomfort for very long? But today's guest has a very different approach to not only facing discomfort, but how to use it to turn around your life and reach your goals. And I really can't wait for him to share his wisdom. Joining us on the podcast is Sterling Hawkins. He is an entrepreneur. He is a motivational leader. He is internationally recognized for speaking. And yes, he is the expert on discomfort. On today's podcast, he's going to share more about being comfortable with the uncomfortable. Sterling, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Lynn. Great to be here. Thanks for having me on. I'm so excited to talk to you today because I love authors. I I love authors. I love your story. But before we jump in and talk about the book, I really want to talk about you. Can you share more about your background and how you got to the work you're doing, Sterling? Of course. It, it's one of those backgrounds I never would have predicted. You know, this is where I've arrived now. The best yeah. ones are always like that, though, right? It, it seems that way. <laughs> I look back, I'm like, I cannot believe that I went through that journey. Yeah. And it started out in upstate New York. I actually grew up a fifth generation retailer in my family's grocery store. Wow. And loved it. You worked all the different departments as a kid and growing up and through college. And then right out of college, I thought, you know what? Time to spread my wings a little bit. I want to... Yeah like leverage all this retail expertise that I have, but strike out a little more on my own. Makes sense. So I start this retail software company with my dad. Of course, my family store was our first customer. <laughs> Sell to the closest <laughs> dollar. That's the first lesson of the day. <laughs> I, I question it. If your dad was not your first customer, I'd question your product a bit. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Uh, and long story short, we end up selling it to this group in Silicon Valley where it becomes Ooh. part of this Apple Pay before Apple Pay. Yeah. And this is early 2000s. And everybody's looking at this thing saying, hey, that's the future. Yeah. And they, you know, we're starting to sign on clients and users and private equities throwing money at us. We raise over $550 million, multi-billion dollar valuation. Offices that gives me world. chills. Like this is the real life Shark Tank stuff. And you were on the top of the world. It was like living a scene out of Wolf Wall Street, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like models of the office, parties at the Four Seasons. Not like, just the movies. Like this is it. Like I made it. I love it. And I, I did think that it was just a matter of time until I'd be crowned the next Steve Jobs and mm. you know, buy an island and a private yeah. jet and all the things. And well, needless to say, it didn't go that way. When the mm. housing market collapsed, our investment dried up and the company ended up going bankrupt. Oh, my heart is breaking just hearing your story, right? Like I'm feeling anxiety and sadness at the same time. It was not only heartbreaking, but my whole identity was so mm -hmm. caught up in it. When the company collapsed, so did I. Yeah. And I end up playing this sad country song of a story out going oh. from like penthouse, live in the dream to my parents' house and six figures of personal debt. And even my girlfriend Ooh. broke up with me. It's like every beat of that sad <laughs> song. Did your tractor break down though? 
everything like my car <laughs> work that I couldn't afford to get done like oh, every so single sorry thing. oh and I had this really profound moment at my parents house where I said you know either I'm going to cut this whole thing short like resign mm -hmm. myself to the rest mm -hmm. of my life in my parents basement or I'm going to start going after the things that have scared me most in life Wow. And it was really that that moment that started turning the whole thing around and was at least the beginnings of building myself back. Wow. Sterling, I feel so much anxiety just listening to your story <laughs> <laughs> that I really like I feel it in my chest mm. that I'm not surprised that your book is called hunting discomfort, <laughs> like just hearing your story. Like if it were a movie, I would be like, oh my gosh. But uh, so hunting discomfort, how to get breakthrough results in life and business, no matter what. Woo. No matter what. I know what your motivations were for the book. What was the process like writing it? Well, so I started to realize there was this pattern of things that I was doing to grow personally and professionally mm -hmm. that just was working. You know, a lot of failures, even from the point I started to turn myself around and a lot of coaching, a lot of self-development, hundreds, thousands of hours working with people that are far smarter than myself. But there was this pattern of things that seemed to just work again and again and again. And, you know, now backed up by years of research, using the pattern to launch, invest in or grow over 50 companies. And more recently, this book, that pattern's been formalized as the no matter what system. Wow. And funny enough, Lynn, yeah. I've been working around this stuff for, for years now. And people had been telling me to write a book. And I'd say, you know, I'm too busy. I'm doing this. I'm speaking <laughs> there. I'm working with this executive team, right? Like I'm I'm just yeah. quote, quote, too busy. And it wasn't until the pandemic hit mm -hmm. where I realized that I wasn't doing what I was talking about. I was scared. Ah. And it took a time of global discomfort for you to write this book on discomfort. It did. It did. <laughs> I realized that I, I was avoiding it using the best excuse in the book, which is I'm too busy. Yeah. And when I caught myself is when I started calling publishers and narrowing down on things and signing a contract as fast as possible yeah. before self-doubt could stop me. <laughs> and, and thus the process began. I love it. I love it. So tell me more about discomfort and why that's important to break through. And yeah. and really, why is this a different approach than others? Yeah, well, most people, when they hear about hunting discomfort, they'll say something like, Sterling, you got to look at my business, my bank account, my relationships, my kids, and like all the things. <laughs> <laughs> and my dog and my yeah. Right. And, and I got inflation, looming depression. We got the war in Europe. We've got like all these things, cost increases, putting pressure on my business and myself. You're crazy. I don't need more discomfort. <laughs> right. And my answer is always the same, which is if you're surrounded by that much discomfort, you're living with it. Mm. You're not hunting it. When mm. you're hunting discomfort, you're opening your mind to new perspectives and new ideas, and you're opening your heart to maybe some really uncomfortable feelings to let them pass through you, leaving you forever free of it. Does that make wow. sense? Kind of, but talk more. Tell me more. I, I kind of get what you're saying. Like, hey, if you just live with it, that's an indication. Yeah. Would you say that's an indication of fear or being stuck? I, I think it is the reason we get stuck yeah. because we're unwilling to do the things that have kept us stuck. When we're unwilling to feel uncomfortable feelings or change our perspective about some things, no surprise, you're going to get yourself backed into a corner pretty soon. Now, from an evolutionary perspective, it kind of makes sense, right? Yeah. Like our ancestors, the, the cavemen back in the day, right. when they felt discomfort, it was actually a motivating factor for them to do something. Yeah, to stay right? alive, like, literally, right? Exactly. Yeah. They had to do something or they would perish. If they have the discomfort of hunger, they've got to go out and pick berries or hunt. Or if they have the discomfort of feeling scared, they've got to build a shelter. It's driving their behavior. Yeah. Now, in modern times, for many of us, we don't live in that kind of survival paradigm of, Hey, if I don't get on this Zoom meeting, 
I might <laughs> I'm gonna die. die. <laughs> yeah, there have been very few times where I've been like, I might die. Yeah, this thing that I am overly worried about, I might die. Very rarely it, do I have that thought. Exactly. Yes. So, so we're able to avoid the discomfort, mm. deny the discomfort, or just kind of batten down the hatches and just show up, kind of like just survive through the discomfort which somewhat ironically leaves us not dealing with the source of that discomfort. Wow. That's and crazy. That's, that's what the system's about. It, it really kind of capitalizes on that discomfort as an indication of I've got to learn something, I've got to do something, I've got to change something here. And it says, hey, that's actually an opportunity, a big neon sign saying, here's where your growth is. Mm -hmm. And when you pursue it, and I would say pursue it inside of the five steps of the system, you're able to make those necessary changes and grow in just profound and oftentimes surprising ways. Wow. Would you talk a little bit? You've you've mentioned the research and you've mentioned the system. What I love is you've got something here that's based on your personal story, your personal experience, you've lived it, and now you've combined it with research and created a system. Can you talk yeah. a little bit more about that? Yeah, well, I found some Norwegian research that started to show me that discomfort for many of us in modern times works like a governor does on your car. You know, if you've got a governor on a car, no matter how hard you hit the gas, you won't go any faster. Yeah. Similarly, if you're avoiding denying or surviving discomfort, this research shows that you're not unwilling, but you're actually unable to act in accordance with the knowledge that you already have. So that means you know exactly what to do, but discomfort stops you. You're literally hitting your head against the wall over and over and over again, and that discomfort is the wall. Exactly. Now, the flip side is also true. The latest research out of Yale says that when you experience this, the symptoms of discomfort, you know, whatever that is for you, your palms get sweaty, your heart races, adrenaline kicks in, right? When you're experiencing those feelings, if you're open to it, if you embrace it, you're primed to learn up to four times faster. Whoa, it's a you're blowing my mind. Wow. Right, right. Evolutionarily, it's a biohack to be better, faster, and smarter because it knew when you feel those things, you've got to act. And if we're not able to uh, act, we're going to get stuck. And when we do, we're primed to act in better ways than we could on a normal basis. All right. So when we're done with this, I'm going to have you tell me that story again, make me feel anxious, and I'm going to run out and learn some new stuff. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's a, that's actually exactly how it works. So you felt physical discomfort. I'm sure we all have. Oh right? gosh. Yes. And emotional discomfort. Yes. For sure. Especially coming out of a pandemic here. Uh, yeah. Physical, mental, emotional, the brain and the body process it almost identically. Research really? is out of university of Michigan. Yeah. So much so you can take acetaminophen like Tylenol, and it helps you with emotional pain. It's that, right. It's crazy. Now, all the disclaimers, <laughs> I'm not a doctor. It's not a biohack. I don't suggest you or anybody do that. But what I do suggest is we take that next step, which is if where you meet discomfort is the same anywhere, we can grow our capacity to, to deal with it everywhere. It's a muscle you can build. You know, so if any of my staff at Kid Glove is listening to this right now, if I put them under stress and discomfort, it's actually for their own good. Is that what you're saying? If they embrace it, yes. Okay. Now, now here's <laughs> that that's the the trick. Like you can't put it on somebody else. Okay. All right. I was kind of kidding about that too. So, I was totally. Kind of kidding. <laughs> but but I but it kind of points to the first step in the system, maybe obviously, is hunt discomfort, right? Go yeah. after those things. Yeah. But the second piece is commit to going through that discomfort in ways where there's no going back. I call it get a tattoo. And, and when you do that, you can't, again, you can't put it on somebody else. You can't say, hey, here's your goals for the quarter. That person <laughs> has to buy into those things, right? They <laughs> have it. to take that commitment on and go through that discomfort themselves. And when they they make a commitment like that, it actually reframes their brain and their perspective 
to look for new openings for action that are quite literally invisible to them where they sit prior. Yeah. So Sterling, I know you work with a number of highly successful people, CEOs, owners, celebrities. Do you work the system with individuals or do you work with individuals and teams as well? Can it be a team sport, hunting discomfort? I I think it just is a team sport. Wow. Uh, Companies only grow and translate into anything, right? Communities, families, any groups of people only grow as much as the people inside them are willing to grow, especially Mm. their leaders. And when leaders open themselves up to this discomfort in a really open and vulnerable way, it kind of lights the path for everybody else to do the same. And you end up cultivating this very intentional and inspired, no matter what culture. Otherwise, you end up with like a default doesn't matter culture. But when you're doing this together, that no matter what culture is unstoppable. I think it's the only competitive advantage there is. That's amazing. All right. You've shared the first two steps. Do you mind sharing the the next couple? Of course. Uh, So the third piece really is about that team. I call it building a street gang. Okay. And I I know you've got kind of a rowdy audience, Lynn. So the disclaimers. (laughs) The most rowdy audience. (laughs) Nobody should do anything unlawful, right? Don't point to me. I don't want to get the calls from jail. Like Sterling told me. This This is about surrounding yourself with people that are going to give you the love, support, mentorship, and maybe most importantly, the accountability to do those things that you're committed to. Now, when you're held accountable, it might not feel good. Yeah, sometimes it does. Oftentimes it does. I find myself, (laughs) I'm I'm just like, I'm dodging commitments because if you never commit, nobody can hold you accountable to anything. Yeah, yeah. But when you do it, you're not 70, 80, 90% more likely to achieve your goal. You're 95%. And as a team, you're Whoa. four times as likely to achieve the goals that you have. It's incredible what it does to performance. That's amazing. That's amazing. All right. So Sterling, step number four. Step number four is what I call flip it. Finding flip it. A, a strength or a new pathway forward amidst you know, the problems that we all have budget shortages, time shortages, you don't have the relationships you want, whatever it is, there is a pathway forward if you've got the courage to look at things in a new and different way. Yeah. Wow. And step five? Step five, I think it's the most important. Oh, all right. Can we skip to step five first or do we have to go through the first four? Well, The thing is, it's kind of modular, right? You can use any of the steps in any of the places and you'll see how kind of the other pieces fall in because every step is a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. The fifth piece is surrender and not give up and watch TV and order pizza. Although there's a time and place for that. I'm a big pizza (laughs) fan. But surrender in terms of accepting things exactly as they are. Mm. And exactly as they're not. Carl Jung, famous psychologist, oh, yeah. the father of modern psychology, right? He said, we cannot change anything until we accept it. Condemnation about anything, your family, the economy, your margins, your team, your clients, the internet going down, condemnation about anything does not liberate. It oppresses and it makes wow. it very hard, maybe even impossible to do much else. Wow, you've blown my mind today, Sterling. I have read a Doing lot my job, of- Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> I have read a lot of books, like been part of a lot of systems, but man, this what you're talking about seems really um really like fresh and I could see I could see how this would be really impactful. But I also kind of just tied into that last step of surrender and the first step of hunting this the discomfort. I mean, it's 2023 as we have this conversation mm. and people have been through a lot of discomfort. I mean, do you ever get people saying to you, I, I, I can't, I can't do this. I can't go look for more discomfort. Yeah. Oftentimes. And it's usually a function of an unwillingness to surrender to what is. Yeah. Almost always. Mm-hmm. It ties and when, to that last step. It does. Yeah. And and when you stop fighting with what is and 
you know, just as important, stop fighting with what has been, that is what starts to free you from that discomfort. What is, is whether I get in a fight with it or not, doesn't change the facts of the matter. Now I can do something about that, but to be most effective, I'm going to have to accept it exactly where it is now. Yourself included, by the way. Mm, mm, wow. Wow. So Sterling, what, tell me about, tell me about the hashtag. What is the hashtag, no matter what, have to do with the book and hunting discomfort? Well, in these, these dark times bottomed out at my parents' house, I was about as numb as you could possibly get. Mm, yeah, I can imagine. And this thing my mom said came back to me. I don't know how your parents and family Moms are. are great. They're great. Yeah. It, great. Like, I, I love my mom to death. She still has all <laughs> these sayings. But the one that came back to me, she said, the way out is through. Mm. And to me, it meant you've got to go through the things that you're scared of, fearful of, embarrassed about. Uh, you've got to go through those things and what you're seeking is on the other side. And I said, you know what? I've been hearing this all my life. I'm going to put this thing to the test. And so I started to tell myself just as a personal mantra that I'm going to go through these things no matter what. Yeah. And it was really simple in the beginning, Lynn. It was like, I'm going to get out of bed tomorrow no matter what. I'm going to call my creditors no matter what. Yeah. And it turns out that that personal mantra with all the, the research and everything else that's gone into it, other people just very unintentionally on my part started to take it on. It, you know, it was first my sister, she says, like too many young people, she dealt with an eating disorder. She said, I'm going to be healthy no matter what. Like I've seen you change, Sterling. I'm doing this. Wow. Today she's the championship bodybuilder. Like it's just unreal. We had somebody else from my professional past, his name's Sofa, and he said, I will be a successful entrepreneur. Now, mind you, this guy came over as a Cambodian refugee, didn't really speak the language, was flat broke. Everything and, against him. Everything. Today, he's the founder of a Cambodian beef jerky company, which I didn't even know was the thing. <laughs> it sounds delicious. <laughs> and he, he's selling more than he can keep up with. And story after story, individual after individual, business after business has realized that the way out for them too is through. They just have to go through no matter what. So amazing. That's great. So Sterling, what's next for you? You've done so much already. I know your your travel and keynote schedule is Bananas. It's, it's a highly technical word, bananas. But mm -hmm. what's next? So I'm actually in the very early stages of working on another book. Ooh, all right. Yeah, yeah. I found like everything that I could think of, like the best of the, the research, my experience, the case studies, the work I did with clients has gone into hunting discomfort. That's what there is today. Yeah. And I'm starting to discover that there's even a level deeper that we can all go. And that's what I'm working on now. Wow. Very exciting. Well, yeah. I can't wait to hear more about that. And uh, since you're doing so much to motivate people, mm. I'm going to ask you my favorite question that I've asked on every Agency for Change podcast. And let's go. Yeah, you're on the hot seat now. This might be uncomfortable, Sterling. I'm just saying it out loud. No, just You're kidding. Speaking my language then. <laughs> <laughs> Could you give us a few of your own words to inspire our listeners? An original Sterling quote. So one of my favorite things is right along the lines of what we've talked about. To deny your discomfort is ultimately to deny part of yourself. Whoa. Right. There's a lot packed into that. Yeah, it, you know, when working with people, leaders, business people, just about anyone, they all have this sense of I have more potential inside of myself. I I can be more. I can do more. I can achieve more. I I am more. And when they come to terms with the discomfort that they have, that's the piece of them that they've held back, they've pushed away, they've ignored, denied, or survived. And as they embrace it, they truly embody their real potential. That's amazing. I have to tell you, you don't know this. My greatest fear in life is not living up to my potential. Wow. So I see that, that quote, that is, that is good stuff. So 
for anyone else where you've piqued their interest, how can they find out more about you? Like, how can they find out about your system, find the book, find the keynotes? What's the best way? The best place is my website, which is sterlinghawkins.com. Uh, there's a bunch of things there. One of the most inspiring things is we've got all sorts of pictures and stories from the no matter what community there. And you can even create your own no matter what, big or small, Whoa. whatever it is that you're committed to and become part of the movement. All right. I'm going to make this commitment. I'm going to go do it. And then in the show notes of this episode, we'll have the link to your website and we'll have my commitment in there too. How about that? I'm excited for it. I can't wait to see. All right. All right. So Sterling, as we wrap up this great conversation, I've enjoyed talking to you so much. What is the most important thing you'd like to leave our listeners with about the work that you're doing? You know, I, I think it's my mom's advice. Mm. She was right. The way out is through. We just have to go through no matter what. Go mom. I hope there's a picture of your mom on your website when I get there. That's a good question. I'm not sure there is. I'm going to have to go look. <laughs> Honor the moms. Sterling, That's right. I fully believe the world needs more people like you. I appreciate so much what you're doing. And thanks for taking the time from your busy schedule to talk with me today. Thanks for having me on, Lynn. It was a pleasure. We hope you enjoyed today's Agency for Change podcast. To hear all our interviews with those who are making a positive change in our communities or to nominate a changemaker you'd love to hear from, visit kidglove.com at K-I-D-G-L-O-V.com to get in touch. As always, if you like what you've heard today, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and share. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.